What does? Well, let me tell you, I've got the answer for that tonight. Well, I don't have the answer, but Jesus does have the answer. Because in his most famous sermon in history, the Sermon on the Mount, he gives the eight secrets of happiness. They're called the Beatitudes. Now, we mostly say blessed are, but actually that word blessed, that actually means happy are. And so... Uh, so so let me let me just give you these eight things real quickly tonight and uh, let me just say that that uh, this is a really a powerful teaching uh, tonight so you need to write some of these things down okay I'm going to give you eight little points here on how to find real lasting happiness okay the first thing you have to do is you've got to get to know God let me uh, flip over here. To, uh, into the book of Matthew chapter 5. You can turn with me to Matthew 5. We're going to be there pretty much the rest of the evening. Uh, Matthew chapter 5. And uh, verse number 3. Matthew 5 and verse 3. Uh, let me read it to you from the Phillips translation today for a moment. Uh, it says, How happy are those who know their need is for God. How happy a person is who knows that they need God. That's a that's a great uh, paraphrase of that of that verse. It says here a little bit more of a translation in the New International Version says, "Blessed is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven." To be poor in spirit doesn't mean that you know you walk around all sad and gloomy. That's not what it's talking about. To be poor in spirit is just simply recognizing that. A person needs God. And so the first step towards happiness is to recognize what your real hunger is. The ache in your heart, what is missing is God. If anything but God is at the center of your life, I'm going to tell you something, you're not going to be satisfied. The Bible tells us that God has made us a spiritual being. You're not just a piece of flesh. A great uh, philosopher, Pascal, says that God created a vacuum-shaped uh, heart. Uh, 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 God, excuse me. God created a God-shaped vacuum in your heart. And when you try to fill that emptiness with anything but God, it's like trying to put a square in a round hole. It just doesn't fit. And so what people are really searching for in their search for happiness is God. And when he is the center, when he's not the center of your life, you are going to be unsatisfied. To make God the center of your life is the first step towards happiness. Augustine said so many hundreds of years ago, he said, Thou, O Lord, has made us for thyself. And our hearts are restless until they find themselves in thee. And so listen, you know, we you know, we need to find God. You were made to know God, and your greatest need is to know him. And the sooner you figure that out, the easier your life's gonna be, okay? So stop trying to find replacements, you know, plastic substitutes for the real thing. Get to know God. There's only one way you can do that, by accepting him as your Savior and knowing him through his word and knowing him through prayer and being with him and living living for him. And then the second uh, way that a person can be happy, according to Jesus, that can step towards this, is that you've got to learn how to trust God. Write this down. Trust God when life is disappointing. You're going to have disappointments in life. And uh, let me read this to you out of the Good News Version. This is Matthew 5 and verse 4. It says, Happy are those who mourn, for God will comfort them. The New, the new, uh, the new International Version says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Now here's the truth about life, all right? Life is a combination of both pleasure and and pain. It's not all fun and games. We know that from personal experience. There's going to be heartache in your life. Uh, I'm sad to tell you that, but it's true, okay? If and here's the here's the point. If you have to live a problem-free life in order to be happy, you're never going to be happy. 
Because if you're dependent upon circumstances to make you happy, then you're actually going to be miserable for most of your life. You have to be learn how to be happy in the problem, in the situation, while you're unemployed, during the difficulty, in the trial, while you're sick, okay? Whatever. You've got to learn how to be happy. And a lot of life isn't just fun of games. So, so what do you do? When you're hurting, you learn how to mourn. You learn how to go with to God with your hurts. You let God handle the hurts. No matter what you're going through right now, I just want to tell you that you are not alone. All right? God is with you. And a lot of people right now, due to, due to COVID-19, are just kind of isolated. They kind of feel alone. But, but you know, God can God can be with you. He can let it, he he can handle your hurts. And so you've got to learn how to trust God during those disappointing times. And actually what happens is you'll find the comfort of God and you'll be able to get happy again, right? I've had great disappointments in life. When I've cried, I've felt so bad. I've just been so disappointed and hurt by life. But you know what? I went to God and he's comforted me. And just a short time later, I find myself happy again. All right? So trust God when life is disappointment. And then number three, you've got to expect God to meet your needs. Uh, verse five here uh, uh, in the in the Phillips translation says this, happy are those who claim nothing for the whole earth belongs to them. Okay, now let me read it to you here. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Okay, so a meek person is not a person who's having to just grab a hold of life with everything you've got. A meek person is someone who's strong on the inside and yet quiet and gentle on the outside. And that can only come as you expect God to meet your needs. I remember my dad always talked about a horse that was meek. Back in the Roman days, they would have a horse that was incredibly trained, but was so tender, so submissive, so understanding uh, of its master that they could actually almost, they could build a fire for a moment underneath that horse and it would not move because it was so trusting. That's a meek horse. And, 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 and that's what we've got to be like. We've got to expect that God is going to meet our needs. Don't expect for your spouse to meet all of your needs or your boss or anyone for that matter. Because if you expect people to meet your needs, you're going to be disappointed. All right? Humans disappoint. God says, expect for me to meet your needs. So rather than frantically grabbing at all you can get, just relax and let God take care of your needs. Be that quiet, that that gentle type of a person. Learn to be a giver, not a taker. If you're his child, uh, you know, you know, God's going to give you the whole world. The world belongs to you. What's interesting is if you go back to Ecclesiastes chapter two, it shows the futility of trying to be happy without God in your life over the long haul. Okay. And uh, the first 11 verses of Ecclesiastes chapter two that we just got through studying, right? Most of those verses he, the Solomon uses these words, my, mine, myself, or I. He uses that 34 times. He talks about my success, my happiness, my health, my harem, my money, my pleasure, my education, my success. It's all incredibly self-centered. How many realize self-centered people are very rarely happy? Why? Because if you're self-centered... You're absorbed. You're the center of your own life. And, uh, and you know, you are the, you, you know, if you're the biggest thing that you're living for, that's, that's not very good, right? And even if you could achieve all that you'd ever want, and, and you would still have to be able to live with yourself. And if you're self-centered, you're probably not too fun to live with, right? So anyway, learn to trust God and not be selfish or, or self-centered. How interesting that this generation that we live in, you know, people call it the me generation, the now generation. 
You know, the me first generation. It's this very self-absorbed group of people that are on the planet right now. You know, they're always, you know, taking the selfie and, you know, here I am, you know, talking about that. But, but, uh, but anyway, listen, God wants us to have that meek, quiet spirit inside of us. And it says, blessed are the meek. They will inherit the earth. Ultimately, God's gonna, you're going to rule and reign with Christ, right? And the number four, the fourth thing that you've got to do if you want to be happy is you've got to follow God's instructions. Verse 6 here says, uh, verse 6 says in the Good News Version, it says, Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. God will satisfy them fully. Wow. If you do what God tells you to do, you're going to be fully satisfied. Uh, the fact is, God wants you to enjoy your life. And I love, I love, there's a verse, and I believe it's in 2 Timothy, that tells us that God has richly given us, given us everything for our enjoyment. So, you know, he wants you to live, and not just to exist. So what he's done is he has created certain principles that are there for your benefit, certain directions, certain instructions that are there for your benefit. Every principle, rule, or command in the Bible is there for you. And the closer that you get to following uh, those principles, actually the happier your life is going to be. And the more you ignore them, all right, the more headaches you're going to have, all right? So you're going to, you know, if you ignore them, you're going to find yourself, you know, bouncing up against brick walls, facing, you know, depression, burnout, anxiety, despair, tension, distress, because you're not actually living the way God wants you to live. Uh, in order to be happy, you've got to follow God's instructions, all right? Uh, verse, let me read this verse six to you out of the the uh, the King the new the new international version. It says, "Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled." In other words, righteousness is not just right standing with God. We've got to have that right. That's a part of righteousness. But righteousness is doing the right thing. You hunger and thirst to follow the rules, to follow what God wants you to do, to be obedient to the Lord. You know, a train. Running along the track says, these stupid tracks, man, they are just so confining. I, I can only go where the tracks let me to go. I, I want to be free. I think I'll just get off the tracks. So this train jumps the tracks, and guess what happens? It crashes and burns, right? It isn't going anywhere. And, and God has put certain guidelines and principles in his word for our life. The, and, and, and they're like a train track, right? And if you go by those principles, your life's going to be a lot smoother and you're going to go a lot farther than if you say, forget the principles, I'm just going to jump off the track and do what I want to do. No, no, no. You'll crash and burn if you do that. And then number five, and this is a powerful one, in order to be happy, is you've got to cultivate a forgiving heart. Oh, I love this one. Here, verse number seven says this, blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy. To be merciful means that you're forgiving, that you're kind, that you're tender towards people. One of the great, uh, one, of, uh, one of the two great destroyers of happiness is uh, bitterness and resentment about what's happened to you in life. How many of you know you cannot be resentful and happy at the same time? And the fact is this, you are going to be hurt. People are going to hurt you. Sometimes they're going to do it on purpose. Man, that's really painful. Sometimes it's more unintentional, but it doesn't matter. It still hurts, right? But what really matters is your response to that hurt. And I want to encourage you to be merciful towards others, to be forgiving towards others. And uh, because if you hold a grudge and you allow that bitterness and that resentment in your heart, the only person that is going to hurt is you. It's not going to hurt them at all. Okay? And Jesus says, for your own sake, learn to cultivate a forgiving, merciful, tender heart. Heart, because you're going to be you're going to you're going to be hurt in life, and if you hold on to your hurt, you can't be happy. And there there are people in our world today. 
who, who allow people from the past to continue to hurt them in the present. They, they do that by thinking about past memories and those past memories continue to be present hurts, okay? That is not very a uh, smart way to live. Uh, you know, they can only hurt you if you allow them to. The best thing in the world is just to forget, forget and forgive. You know, just let it go and just trust God with all of that. And, you know, people may need some help or some counsel or have to work through some of those things to be able to release that anger uh, so that uh, when, when the memories come up, that, that you know, that, 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 you know that, that even though they're still there, those memories, that they don't hurt them. But I can assure you that if past memories are hurting you, you've got to learn how to let go of that. Okay, and learn how to really live and cultivate a forgiving heart. And then number six, you've got to maintain a clear conscience. I like this one. Uh, it says, happy are the pure in heart, for they will see God. To be pure in your heart, right? To, to, you know, to have a pure heart means that your conscience is clear before God. And there's nothing that destroys happiness like guilt. You know, you have the fear of getting caught, you know. Uh, you have the fear of, of worrying about someone's going to find out. You know, the happiness people in the world are those who live with integrity. They're transparent about their life. What you see is what you get. And one of the benefits of, the, of having integrity is that you can have a very short memory, right? You don't have to remember who told you what. You don't have to, you know, you could just all be, live honestly all the time. And if you want to be happy, live with integrity, live with a pure heart, live guilt free in your life. And that's, of course, one of the reasons why Christ, I believe, came to this earth, right? He died on the cross for us so that we could be forgiving. And, and, and what happens is the shed blood of Jesus wipes the slate clean. And it also allows us to maintain a clear conscience about our life. And gives us a fresh chance to start over, to redo. And so when we confess our faults and failures before the Lord, we go to God and He and find immediate forgiveness for that. And then the next thing is, if you want to be happy, you've got to build healthy relationships. Man, I, the older I get in life, the more I discover that this is true. Verse number 9 says this, Blessed are the peacemakers, right? Blessed are the peacemakers. For they will be called the sons of God. You know, conflict destroys happiness too. Uh, you can have all the the money and the best house and all of that stuff, but man, if you're in relational conflict with people, it just tears you up on the inside. You know, we've got to learn how to be peacemakers and peace builders in our life. And, uh, you know, how many people do you know in your life that perhaps they made a great career but uh, for themselves, but they wound up losing their marriage in the very same process? Or, 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 or maybe they made a, a lot of money, but they were gone so, so many times. But guess what? They lost their kids, you know? Uh, you know, I don't care how much money you make or what you achieve. What does it matter if you get to the very top of your career and then all of a sudden... There's nobody to share it with, right? It's just not fun. And so, you know, maybe you've just been on the fast track. Listen, maybe you just get off the fast track and work on relationships, work on making some close friendships and, and uh, developing those things. Build healthy relationships. Uh, because it doesn't matter if everything else is going good in your life. If your relationships are bad, man, you're, you're going to say to yourself, man, my life stinks. But let me tell you something, God wants you to be a peacemaker in your life. Do what you can. Study that out. And uh, so maybe there's some areas that might need relational repair. That's okay, right? Work on that. Trust God with it. Pray about it. God's going to help you. And then the last thing that we've got to do if we're going to uh, be happy is we've got to learn how to live with an eternal perspective. Don't just look to the here and now. The scripture tells us, happy are those who are persecuted because they are good. Okay, that's found in the Living Bible paraphrase. 
And I like that paraphrase because it doesn't say, happy are those who are persecuted because, you know, they were pushy about their faith or they were just being obnoxious. No, it says those who are good. Let me read it to you out of the the NIV, it says, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for standing for something right, for being somebody that's right, for someone who is good. You look at their life and say, that's a good man, a good woman, a good person. Uh, you know, uh, it, 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 what, it, what it means is that we actually live our life with eternity in mind. Uh, you know, we, we, we do the right thing because it's the right thing to do in life. And, uh, you know, uh, so it's just uh, really just a, a matter of perspective about how we live. Do we live for the here and now or do we live for the future? I know there's a lot of people that just focus on here and now. And, uh, you know, the here and now can let you down. Money can go up and down. The stock market goes up and down. Your 401k fluctuates. A lot of stuff can go can go bad in this life. But let me tell you something. What you do for God is what's important. That's what's going to bring you lasting happiness. And when you get to heaven, man, that's going to be a wonderful and glorious, glorious, uh, glorious thing. Well, anyway, the bottom line is this. That Solomon, the wealthiest man who ever lived, the wisest man who ever lived, said this. I tried it all. I did it all. I had it all. I experienced it all. And it's not there. And then Jesus comes along and Jesus said, this is the way that you can be happy. And this is what he says. He says, get to know God. Trust God when, life's, when, when life is disappointing. Expect God to meet my needs. Follow God's instruction. Cultivate a forgiving heart. Maintain a clear conscience. Build healthy relationships. And live with an eternal perspective. Let me give you one more verse today. I like this verse. It's found in Psalms 37 and verse number 4. This is what it says. Seek your happiness in the Lord. And he will give you your heart's desire. Wow, what a great verse that is. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Decide that God is going to be number one in your life. Can I pray with you today? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this Bible study that we've had tonight. And Lord, I pray for someone maybe who's listening to me and they've realized, man, I'm just not happy. Listen, I pray for that person today. God, that they would get to know you deeper and deeper. Lord, that you would bring them that peace and happiness, that sense of well-beingness, that blessedness that you talked about in the Beatitudes, Lord. And I pray that that would come to them very quickly. And Lord, we repent of turning to all the things that are out there in the world, education and pleasure and money and prestige and power and, and success. All those things don't bring happiness. But Lord, we trust you for our happiness today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, listen, for those of you who can make it, we're looking forward to seeing you on this Sunday at 1030 as we gather to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We're reopening. Amen. God bless you. We will see you later. And uh, thank you for watching this Facebook Live study. Amen.